Dogs are outstanding workout partners. They don't care what the weather is outside. They don't care what they had for dinner or to drink the night before. For that matter, a few minutes before, dogs want to run. And unless they're treadmill trained, you know dogs usually want to run outside. And so a few years back when I got a yellow lab, I thought it'd be fun to teach him how to ski jor. And so I thought it'd be a great idea to get some exercise. I had multiple reasons for wanting to do this. First, I thought it'd be good exercise for him, good for me, but mostly so I could buy more sports equipment. I love sports equipment. It's like the power tool of sports. I have sports equipment for sports that I'll probably never do, but I just feel more fit by owning this stuff. And so I keep buying more sports equipment. I already had some really nice skis. In fact, right before I started this with Rocky, I bought some new stuff. And the guy at the sports store said, these $250 poles are made of graphite. You'll go faster and further by having these great poles. And I said, sure, I'll take them. But I didn't have the ski belt. But my sister for Christmas gave me the whole harness set up. She smiled and said, enjoy. She claimed I smacked her as a kid. I disagree with that. But now I had everything that I need to go ski drawing. Now, I'd seen people ski drawing before, and I had these visions of Rocky and I gracefully going across the snow, him putting just the right amount of pressure on my belt as we went across the snow, <laughs> easily going up the hills. The only easy thing that ever happened to me in this ski drawing event was putting my own belt on. It went downhill from there. It took me almost half an hour to get the, that little easy harness on Rocky. He was jumping around. He was 95 pounds, excited puppy. He would not stay still. I kept trying to get it on, get the feet in the right place, and finally I got it on, drug him behind me, set him down behind me, and I said, stay, and started getting my stuff on. And Rocky was just quivering, just whining, ready to go. I looked around at my son, and I said, so Chris, are you ready to go? As soon as I said go, I saw this white flash. <laughs> I heard a snap and I saw stars. I thought I was hurt. It was all quiet and I'm laying there and suddenly I realized I was really seeing stars. When Rocky shot by, the rope wrapped around my legs, jerked my feet out from underneath me and I was lying straight back looking at the sky with my skis pointing straight up. Now, Rocky soon starts jumping on me because he's bored already and he's going, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm trying to get up and I'm trying to find my ski poles and I look over and I realized that that snap was Rocky running through a $125 ski pole. <laughs> I was still on my skis, but I tried to get one whack in at him, and I looked around, and I saw my son looking at me kind of sternly, and I thought, no, that's not a very good thing to do. And so I pulled myself together and calmed down, and we finally took off. And we skied her that night, and I want to share a couple lessons. The first obvious lesson, of course, is use cheap equipment. <laughs> Don't want to use your best equipment. The other thing, and this came as a real surprise to me, I didn't know that dogs don't instinctively know what G and ha meant. I thought that they knew this. Now Rocky, I think, knew what ha meant, because every time I said ha, thinking he'd go left, he'd just look back at me with this evil grin, and I think he was actually thinking, ha, you think you have some control. <laughs> I also learned that although Kincaid has beautiful wildlife, it's not necessarily fun to see them when you're attached to a dog. <laughs> and if a rabbit runs from the right to the left, you can plan on going left. Now Rocky really didn't care about the signs that were out there. In fact, he ignored all of the signs, the stop signs, the do not enter signs, no dogs allowed, there's trails, no dogs are supposed to go on. Rocky didn't care. He went wherever he wanted. There's also one critical flaw in my planning. I didn't think about how do you stop a dog. He's 95 pounds of muscle, claws, and paws. I'm on freshly waxed skis. <laughs> and so I tried yelling, whoa! Because that's what, uh, horses stop, right? You yell, whoa, on the movies, horses stop. That didn't work, and so I resorted to prayer. Now, prayer didn't stop me, but it made me feel better that a power higher than myself had a sense of humor about my evening. And so I did find something funny to get Rocky to slow down. I'd slam myself into the closest tree, <laughs> hold on, and Rocky would stop because he was attached to me. And then he'd come back and playfully run around me, effectively tying me to the tree with the ski drawer rope, and I'd stand there and have to bring him back and untie him. And so I had many adventures learning how to ski drawer that night, and I haven't bought the I Love Ski, ski Drawer t-shirt yet. I'm thinking about it, but I'm thinking I might try it. And I encourage everybody with a dog to try it, but I think I might try this again. But I think next time I try ski drawing, I want a smaller dog. 